Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. Today we have a Kickstarter preview. This one is for Imperius from Colossal Games. This is a two to four player card game with some hidden deployment, some card drafting, and the hook really is that a lot of your cards, because each, each player is going to come with their own set of cards, you're going to share all of these cards after they're shuffled together. Yeah, let's first start and say that this game is by Grant Rodiak. This is the guy who did yep. Cry Havoc, which was extremely popular the past couple years. Uh, this is his brand new game, and the idea behind this is that each player is representing a house. And in this house, you come to the table with your house's cards. Everyone has six cards that are unique to them. You're going to have your banner across the side of those cards. The trick here in this game is, as David just said, when you're drafting these cards around the table, you may, at the end of the draft, draft all of your cards. Or you may draft your cards and a mix of another player's cards. Or you may not draft any of your cards and just other players' cards. The true hook here is that how you place these onto the planets and how they interact with each other. So there may be times when you want to draft just yours. Or there may be times when you see that card that you know you can kind of hang up or kind of negate by playing one of the cards you've already previously drafted. Yeah, it plays into different player styles for sure, because Absolutely. if you're a player who likes to keep control of your game, mm -hmm. you can try to draft as many cards of yours as possible. Now, not all of your cards are going to be in one hand, because there are going to be some cards left in the deck. Yeah. But you can either take as many of your cards as you can, or if you're one of those players that like to kind of interact and mess with other people's games, you can take some of their cards. And as we describe the cards here in a moment, you'll understand why you might want to do that. Each of these six cards that you come to the table with are each unique characters. You may have an ambassador and, and a noble and an elder and all these different types of characters that all do different or have different powers within the game. Each of them is going to have an initiative order in the upper left-hand corner, and they're also going to have a strength and a favor, plus any kind of special abilities across the bottom. You're also going to have a player board in front of you. This player board's going to house all eight of your control tokens. Through the course of the game, you're going to be playing characters into each of these planets, trying to control these different locations. At the end of the game, you're not only going to get victory points for every control token that you have on the planets, but also if you have the most, you're going to grab the victory points from that particular planet. Speaking of planets, you're going to have an X number of planets in front of you. These are the places that people are going to be fighting over, the territories that you're trying to capture. The trick here is the number of planets you have is dependent upon the number of players. And a certain amount of them have to be base planets, meaning they have no innate inherent abilities to them. You can also play with one of them that has a unique variable player power. Yeah, the planets here, there are quite a bit of variability. Uh, even the base planets have different points to be scored. So you can randomly pick whatever number of those that you need. And then, like Jeremy said, you can take one planet that also has a point value, but in addition, it might have a really interesting effect. For instance, it might have a rule about how you can play your cards on that planet, how they're resolved, etc. On the bottom of your player uh, card, you're also going to have some scaling negative victory points. There's going to be times in the game where you may have one of your characters killed by another player's assassin. When that happens, you're just going to tick this down. At the end of the game, those are negative victory points. So again, this is very important in a card drafting game. When you're getting those cards, you have to kind of recognize where other players' assassins may be and where you may be placing your nobles onto each of these planets. You also have a scoreboard up here. This is going to track the victory points in the game. This is almost a pseudo racing game. The game ends when one player scores 20 points, but that's not the end of the game. You're going to finish out that round, but there's a chance to score additional victory points. That's done by controlling these planets and getting the victory points for them, or even just having a mass amount of your control tokens on them. Yeah, and we've talked about just about all of the components at this point, except for the event cards. There are a number of event cards, and again, depending on player count, you're going to use X number of these in the deck with all of the faction cards. So at the beginning of the game, all the cards in the game are going to be gathered up, shuffled together, and then everyone's going to be dealt five cards. So the very first thing that's going to happen is you're going to draft those cards. Out of the five cards you have, you're going to pick one of them and pass them off to the left. You're trying to decide which of those cards you may want to collect, whether it be a faction card of your own or even the character cards, because each of these characters have their own innate abilities. Yeah, so we'll give you a description of all the characters, because that's really what this game revolves around. Yep. I'll start with the Noble, because the Noble, I think, is the, the first one that seems easiest to understand how you're going to score some points with it. If you place your Noble in one of the planets, and when you're resolving, the, re the Noble is going to score the points for that planet if, and only if, all of your faction cards on that planet add up to the most favor on that planet. 
Like we said earlier, each card is going to have a strength value in red and a blue value here that is favor. So you're going to look at all of the cards on that planet with your banner, add up the favor. If you have more than everyone else, your noble is going to score those points on that planet. Now, if there is an assassin in that area from a different player's faction, that player has the chance to assassinate one of the nobles in that chain of cards. That would negate the ability to score their noble. Now, as we said, anytime you kill somebody, that player that was assassinated is going to move down onto their thing. So it, drafting the assassin is also very important, especially as you see how the board starts to play it. And we'll talk about that after we talk about all the different characters. Yeah, and so the next card plays right in <laughs> alongside the noble and the assassin, and that is the royal guard. The Royal Guard, if they are on that planet, they're basically going to be able to counter that assassin who attempts to kill their noble. Mm -hmm. So if there's a Royal Guard and your noble on a planet and someone tries to assassinate you, you can sacrifice the Royal Guard so that your noble is still there yeah. in order to score their points if you want. I'll talk about the next two, and that's your ambassador and your commander because they work kind of in the same exact way. The ambassador is a straight up score if you have the most favor. If you have the most favor in that chain or that number of cards in that planet, you're gonna score X number of points according to whatever that ambassador says. Now, all these cards are a little bit different. Some of them may score two points, some of them may score three points. Again, it's how much favor you have. They work a little bit different than the nobles because the nobles are scoring the planets and the ambassadors are scoring what's on their card. The commander works almost the same way, but he's scoring your strength. If you have the most strength in that chain of cards on that planet, you're going to score an X number of points and you're gonna be able to place one of your control tokens on that planet he's the way in which you're gonna be able to be able to go out there and control different areas. The last one is the Elder, and he changes quite a bit. Yeah, so the Elder is where even more vari variability comes into the game, because the standard game can be played with Elders that have no effect mm -hmm. other than contributing to either the strength or the favor of your faction on that planet. However, there are going to be a number of other Elders that you can choose. Now, you can't use more than one Elder in a game, but if everyone wants to, you can decide to use one of the more flavorful elders that have, in addition, a power at the bottom. And again, these can do a number of different things. It can change things up. There's been elders that uh, allow you to basically steal someone's royal guard for the turn and make them your royal guard. Yeah. So you're able to foil each other. And if you can't tell already, this game is about laying cards down, making plans, hoping that someone doesn't foil your, foil your plans and then maybe hopefully foiling theirs. I mean, it's a lot of mind games for sure. So let's rewind. We talked about card drafting. Now we've given you all the different possible variables with the six different characters. So you're drafting these characters one card at a time. As we said, you have five cards in your hand, but you're only gonna draft four of those. That means one card from every player is gonna be left over. You're gonna randomly shuffle those cards and assign one of them randomly face up to each one of those planets. That's perfect knowledge. Everyone knows what those cards are. Now is the opportunity to play the four cards that you've drafted. You're gonna do this in turn order. You're gonna look through your cards and you have the opportunity of playing these cards either face up or face down. Each one of these columns, we have a four player game set up so there's four planets, can hold two face down cards but no more than two. So you have the opportunity of playing the card that you wish to play face down or you can play it face up. Again, this gives other players knowledge and as the round starts to develop, you start getting an idea of where people's cards are and how they're going to interact with one another. The other ones are the events. These have to be placed face up. Yeah, many of the events, like Jeremy said, have to be placed face up and there's an icon on many of those that say, this needs to be played face up. There's a bunch of different qualifiers on there. Uh, some of them have the infiltrate ability. Uh, here's one that doesn't need to be played face up. This one is called Planetary Siege. You can play this face down, and it does. Nobles cannot score on this planet. <laughs> so again, another taste of how you can really just get in there and mess with people's plans. This game is about mind games for sure, mm -hmm. because you're going to be playing these cards, like Jeremy said, face up or face down. The other thing to keep in mind is any one of these columns can only hold five cards total. So once there are two cards played face down, you have to play face up. Now on the flip side, you could play the second card in a column face up just to mess with people's minds because they're gonna wonder, wait, why is he playing that face up? What is he trying to get me to think? Right. And that's what this game revolves around for sure. Once all the cards have been played, meaning you're gonna have in a four player game, 
four columns with five cards each. You're then going to reveal the cards in column one. These are all gonna be revealed at the same time. Then you're gonna do a stacking order depending upon the initiative order of all these cards. As we previously said in the upper left-hand corner, you have numbers. The lower numbers are gonna go before the higher number. So you're simply gonna go through that stack top to bottom and see how those cards interact with one another. Yeah, so I have quickly placed these in order uh, based on initiative from zero all the way to seven here. So you're gonna start here at the top with the elder. The elder simply has an effect in this column that says any royal guard or any card with the protect ability is not going to have any effect. So nobles here, you're not protected by your royal guard. The next one we have here is an event. The event is a famine. This is one of those interesting cards. It's going to, whoever has the most favor, which is usually a good thing, mm -hmm. is actually gonna lose two points. And yeah. this is one of those hidden cards that's gonna come out and sneak up on you. Then we have an ambassador. The ambassador here is going to score some points if their faction has the most favor here, and they will do that immediately. Mm -hmm. Then we go to the assassin. The assassin, of course, is gonna kill this noble below it because the noble hasn't activated yet. And then that's the end of this column. Yeah, you've gonna... resolved the cards one at a time, then you're gonna move over to the next column. Yeah, so you're gonna add up all those victory points. For instance, this person would get three victory points, but they lose two of them immediately because they have the most. And from this event, they're only gaining one victory point. Right. So the opportunity to, to gain a, a large amount of victory points has been negated by those event cards. Again, you can draft those event cards if you want. You can draft a whole hand of event cards and let other players kind of use your cards wherever they so wish. Once you're done playing all these cards, you're gonna uh, manipulate the score track according to what kind of victory points you scored, and then all these cards are gonna be shuffled back together and put onto the bottom of the previous stack, meaning that the cards that weren't used in the last round will be used this round, plus a mixture of some yep. of the cards that were used in that round. Yeah, so it's very interesting because there's a staggered feel to the way these cards come out onto the table. If you don't see your card in your hand the first round, it may mean someone else took it, mm -hmm. but it may mean that it's in that next deck. So you know in that thin stack of cards that are left, it's gonna be one of the first cards that comes out into the hands in the next round. Then you're gonna pass the first player marker over to the player on your left. Uh, you're gonna redistribute five cards each player. You redo that draft until someone has scored 20 points. And then you're gonna add up again all of the different command tokens. Everyone who has a command token on a planet is gonna score at least one point for every command token they've placed. And they're gonna manipulate the score track as such. Then you're gonna see whoever has the most in each of these areas. Whoever has the most is gonna score those victories for those particular planets. Player with the most victory points wins. Yeah, this game is a nice little, I would say take that game. It has that feel mm -hmm. for sure. You're basically, like we said earlier, sneaking around with every card you choose to draft, mm -hmm. every card you play, um, trying to play the right ones face down, maybe playing some face up to mess with people's minds. It's definitely game of mind game. Yeah, so this is a, a really unique game. I mean, you are drafting cards and it kind of pulls you out of the natural element of wanting to draft your own hand of cards. Yeah. And there's gonna be situations when you wanna draft other players' cards. It's really about making uh, opportunistic drafts every single round that you play, knowing what's in your hand at that time and what's coming in your hand and then using those cards on the right planets at the right time. You have some information, but you never have perfect information about every single one of those no, planets. No, it's, it's just enough information yep. to make you think twice about what your opponents are up to for sure. Yeah. And I like this trend of, we've seen a couple games now, and this is the most recent, where every player has some cards mixed together mm -hmm. and sharing them in a way where you're getting some of your opponent's cards. Yeah, so this one is Imperius. It's from Grant Rodiak and also Colossal Games. Plays two to four players. If you guys have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and everything else that we do. And we'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.